Pastor Garrett's been taking us through a series in Revelation, and uh, in a few weeks, we'll get back to that. But for three weeks, we're going to step into a series that we're calling Practicing the Way. And uh, this series gets inspiration and uh, gets its title from a ministry of that name. And I'd encourage you, if you haven't already, I know many of you have, but check out practicingtheway.org. Lots of really valuable discipleship tools there that uh, I find very helpful. And there's a book of the same name by John Mark Comer. Some of you are familiar with that. But uh, this is a ministry that focuses on some really valuable things. And we want to press into some of those things together in these next three weeks. So um, I love that we get to do that together. I am so looking forward to this. And I I just want to jump in with a few questions for you. So think carefully before you answer these questions, okay? But raise your hand if you would say... I am in favor of modern indoor plumbing. (laughs) I think that's everybody. Um, Between you and me, first service, quite a few people did not raise their hand. Okay, but I think that was almost all of us. Um, Okay, let's press on a little bit. Raise your hand if you... Know something about how plumbing works. You know how the pipes work. Maybe you visited the the water uh, treatment plant or something like that. So you have some knowledge about this. Anybody? A few of you. Okay, quite a few. What about, raise your hand if you have attempted some home plumbing projects. You've dabbled in some plumbing yourself. Anybody? And I mean successfully successfully quite a few hands went down um literally this week I was under the kitchen sink messing around fixing something and Hannah's in the kitchen and she says do you you know that water is just like geysering out into the kitchen right I didn't know that so I'm glad she told me but some of us are dabblers okay so here's one more question How many of you have been apprenticed to a master plumber to learn the craft of plumbing? Anybody? There was one in the first service. I don't see any here in the second. That was a different question, wasn't it? Because it's one thing to be in favor of something, make use of something, understand some of the facts, about something and even dabble in something. It is a completely different thing, isn't it? To apprentice to a master and learn a craft. And we just want you to know that here at Longmont Calvary, our desire is that all of us would become more and more committed apprentices of Jesus. That's our desire Our desire is not that every week we come together and we have a gathering of people who are in favor of Jesus or we support Christianity or Christian values or we learn some facts, we know theology, we know Bible answers. Those are are good things, but that's not the goal. The goal is not even that we would dabble. Oh, sometimes we kind of, you know, try out some of the stuff that Jesus did, some of the ways that he taught Our goal goes way beyond that. We want to be apprentices who spend time with a master and hear from him and learn from him and become like him. That's our desire. I think that's your desire too. I think many of you, that's that's where you're at. That's what you're doing. And others of us, maybe that's not where we are, but But we need to be. Uh, Any of us that profess faith in Jesus, that's really who we are. We're we're apprentices. Whether we recognize it or not, whether we're leaning into that or not, that's who we are. Um, And if you've never heard the term apprentice used in this context, you've heard the term disciple and you've heard the term discipleship. So when we're talking about apprenticeship, we're just talking about another way, um, some have suggested maybe even a fuller richer way to translate those Greek terms that that we usually call a disciple or discipleship. Apprenticeship to the master. 
That's what we get to think about in these coming weeks. So we're going to think about it today from Luke chapter 9. So you can go there, pull that up on your device. And here's what's going on in Luke chapter 9. Jesus' ministry is getting momentum. And there are a lot of crowds following him. Uh, Towards the beginning of chapter 9, we have the feeding of the 5,000. So if you showed up and you got free food, then you'd probably keep coming, right? You'd keep following, whether your motives were pure or not. And that's what's going on, is there are these droves of people, they're curious, they're interested, and Jesus is looking for apprentices. He's looking for commitment. And so here's what he says in chapter 9, verse 23. And he, Jesus, said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? So these are really intense words from Jesus. And we need to hear them and we need to think about them together. These are apprenticeship words. Can you hear that? That Jesus is calling out not just Will you become members of an organization or will you ascribe to certain beliefs or morals? He is asking for people to come with him and be part of what he's doing. That's the invitation. So here's the first thing that I observe from this passage about apprenticeship. And that is that this invitation of apprenticeship to Jesus, I love this, it is available to anybody. Did you hear that? Because in verse 23, Jesus said to all. So there's crowds of people following Jesus at the time. And he's saying this to anybody, anybody in earshot. And here we have it right here. So we can hear it now too. He said to all. And then if we're still wondering, well, does that include me? If anyone, anyone would come after me. This is an invitation that every single one of us has an opportunity to take Jesus up on it. And that's something. Now, uh, if you grew up in this culture, first century Jewish culture, then to become an apprentice to a, a, a master, a rabbi, that was like the Ivy League school of the day. That was as good as it gets. That's where the elite would go. So if you wanted to be apprenticed to a rabbi, you would have to go through a very elaborate screening process to see if you made the cut. You'd have to answer the questions. You'd have to demonstrate your worth and your commitment. And then maybe if you were good enough, then the rabbi would say, okay, I apprentice you and you can come follow me. That's how they would say it. Well, here's Jesus Totally countercultural, greatest rabbi ever, God himself in the flesh. And what's his screening process? He doesn't have one. Just come, whoever. You can apprentice to me. That's amazing. How can he do that? Shouldn't he be a little pickier <laughs> about who he takes on? And the reason that Jesus can do this is. The opportunity to be his apprentice is not something that we have to qualify for. It's not something we have to deserve. It's not something we have to earn. He just gives it. He just gives us the opportunity. That's the gospel. We're broken. We're not qualified. We're not good enough. We wouldn't make the cut. And Jesus comes along and he says, my death pays for your sins. My resurrection offers you new life and a new way of life. So come, come. 
Anybody. Anybody's welcome. Now, I, I really want to emphasize that, and I love this. It's not just this passage, right? It's all over the scripture. It's John 3.16. Whoever, whoever believes in him. It's the, the parable of the wedding feast. Who gets invited to the wedding feast? Remember, the kingdom of heaven is like this banquet. And who gets invited? Everybody gets invited. Go out and tell everybody. And I just, I, I want us to sit with that for a minute because I know that there are many of us in this room, you don't feel like Jesus actually wants you. You don't feel like he's actually inviting you. Deep down, you, you question this. Like, I don't know. I can see how he would want these people over here who, you know, seem better, godlier, smarter, more qualified, whatever it is. But me, I just, what do I have to offer? And, and, and the sins that I've committed and the struggles that I still have and the, just, I'm trying to figure this out and I, I just don't know. I don't know if he would want me. And I just want to tell you, based on the word of God and the words of Jesus himself, yes, he does. He does. He invites you. You get to be apprenticed to the master. This is for everybody. Um, by the way, that also means that the people that you don't really like very well get invited too. So that's another issue you're going to have to think through and wrestle through. But, and, 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 and please notice that the invitation here, again, I just want to keep, keep coming back to this. The invitation is not join a church, have a certain doctrinal statement, attend worship services regularly. Those are, those are good things. But the invitation is apprenticeship. Be with him. Become like him. Join him in doing what he's doing in the world. That's the invitation. And it is for everybody. Including you. Including me. But here's the next observation from this passage. Apprenticeship to Jesus. Yes, we can all come. But there is a cost. There's a cost. Apprenticeship to Jesus involves great cost. We talk about the cost of discipleship, and that's a real thing. Because what did he say to the people who would come? Okay, anyone can come, and if you do, what are we going to do? Well, you're going to deny yourself. Now, that's countercultural, isn't it? Deny yourself. Aren't you supposed to believe in yourself? Aren't you supposed to follow your heart? Aren't you supposed to create your own destiny and your own identity and Jesus says no you don't get to do that you get to deny all that and then I'm going to do that for you you got to deny yourself you got to take up your cross you got to lose your life for my sake hmm that sounds tough that sounds tough. And, and did you notice that it says daily? Deny yourself, take up your cross daily. And I think sometimes we almost operate as though Jesus comes and says, put your faith in me or pray a prayer or something like that and um, then your sins are forgiven and you're going to heaven and I'll see you then. Good luck with your life. And that, that's not the case, right? There is a daily walking with Jesus that we get invited into here. Uh, and that's a challenge. You know, if you, uh, back, back to this uh, imagery of being an apprentice to a plumber or an electrician or something like that, if you signed up for an apprenticeship like that, what are you doing day after day? You're showing up for work. You're coming. You're coming to learn. You're coming to be hands-on. You're coming to hear from the master, and you're going to speak to him as well. There's going to be a connection there as you develop in your skills. And, and if you're showing up to work every day, that means there's some other stuff that you're not doing, that you could be if you weren't an apprentice. But you're not doing that stuff because you're here. You're an apprentice. That's how apprenticeship works. And that's what Jesus is saying, is that there's this cost Denying yourself, taking up your cross, laying down your life. John Mark Comer, who uh, wrote the book Practicing the Way, observed that following Jesus 
always requires you to leave something behind. It does. You know, we think about some of those early disciples who left their boats, their nets, their dad, their livelihood, their lifestyle, their identity. I think we need to pause and ask, okay, what is he asking me to leave behind? If I'm serious about being an apprentice of Jesus, what's getting in the way? What's getting in the what's preventing me from leaning into that? And what is he calling me to walk away from so I can walk more closely with him, my master? Would you just think about that for a minute? It, it, it could be that he is asking you, and you might already know this, and you're annoyed that I'm bringing it up. It might be that he's asking you to walk away from, from, from some stuff. You, you, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It could be as big as he's asking you to change careers. I don't know. Is the career path that you're on getting in the way of your apprenticeship to Jesus? Or is it part and parcel of your apprenticeship to Jesus? Maybe he's asking you not to walk away, but to rethink the way you engage in your career. Or in retirement. Or in your pursuits. Or how you arrange your calendar. What your priorities are. It could be, again, this might already be there in your mind. It could be that he's asking you to take some steps against some unhealthy patterns in your life that you are stuck in. Some fixations, maybe some addiction. And he's asking you to take some steps. Confess to somebody you trust. Go and get some counsel from somebody who has wisdom. Maybe see a, a therapist even to help you walk through these things. Humble yourself enough to, to take those steps. Is he asking you to do that? We, we got to do it. We got to do it. We're apprentices. This is what we're about. He may be asking you to do some stuff that maybe doesn't seem as big as that, but still it's a pretty big deal. Maybe he's just asking you to turn your phone off. Sometimes, just turn it off. Right? Or like John Mark Comer uh, advises, put your phone to bed before you go to bed. And your phone get, has to sleep in. It doesn't get to get up, get up until you've been up for a while and you've been with your master. Just turn it off. Turn off the news. Turn off the TV, the radio, your device, whatever. Or whatever else he might be asking you to do. I think there's probably something going on in your mind right now that God is bringing up like, consider this. Would you walk away from this so that you can walk with me? Because you're my apprentice. And you're to become like me. So come, walk away from that. Um, it, it's interesting when you read this and here's all these people and um, what an opportunity this could have been the first mega church, right? Here they all are. And um, Jesus is actually kind of offending people, driving some people away. Here's what you need to do. You need to die, deny yourself, things like that. And it's like, what? This is bad marketing. <laughs> it's like, did Jesus need a campaign manager, right? To sit him down. Okay, we understand, you, you know, sacrifice is a good thing. That's good, but aren't you going a little far with this? We just don't think this whole deny yourself, take up your cross, lay down your life is going to get traction. <laughs> well, that's what he said, and it got some traction. Here we are 2,000 years later, one little local expression of countless in the world, changing the world, building the kingdom. It got traction. How? <laughs> like, what, what was it about this message? And, and I think even as we're hearing it, even though part of us is resistant and turned off by this, there's another part of us that's really drawn to this, right? Like, yes, I want 
a cause that I can give myself fully to. That's what we long for, isn't it? We have, we have some Generation Z people in this room. And I love, like, the younger generation, they are so vocal about wanting to be part of a cause, wanting to be part of something bigger than themselves, something to give themselves to. And I think that's in all of us. And here's Jesus offering it. Now, maybe one reason you wouldn't respond to Jesus here is if you're going your own way, you're doing your own thing, you're determining your own destiny, identity, living according to your desires, and it's going great. If that's the case, then you're probably not going to be very responsive to Jesus. But what if you're doing all that and it's not going so great? I mean, what if you're, you're, as Jesus said, you're hanging on to your life, trying to make it what you want it to be, and you can just feel yourself losing it, even as you're doing that, losing your life. Like, this is not working. This is not fulfilling. There's this void in my life. What's going on here? And then along comes Jesus and says, yeah, you've got to lay that down for my sake. And then I'm going to give you your true self, your true life. Ah, oh, that draws us, doesn't it? There's, it has a ring of truth to it. So this is what we're invited into, and we've kind of been teasing it. Now let's just say it. Third observation, apprenticeship to Jesus. The payoff, okay, it has a great cost, but the payoff, how great is the payoff? Infinite. It's infinite. It is so worth it. All right, as Dallas Willard said about this concept of the cost of discipleship, yeah, but the cost of non-discipleship is way more, way more. You know, we've read those parables that Jesus told. I think it's in Matthew 13. The kingdom is like this treasure or like this pearl. You remember those stories? And when somebody discovered the treasure, the pearl, it was like, what do I have to do to get that? I'll do whatever. I'll leave behind whatever. I'll sell what I just, I need that. And I don't care what it costs me. Because the cost of not getting that treasure would be so much greater. And that's the cost of non-discipleship. The payoff is infinite. Now, I just want to think, what is the payoff? Okay, when we deny ourselves, take up our cross day after day, walk with Jesus, what is the benefit Okay, does that sound selfish to ask that? Jesus told us to do things for the reward from his Father, not earthly rewards. Okay, in what way do we get our life? Because he says we're going to get our real life by doing this. Okay, in what way does that happen? Well, let's just think about it for a minute. If you're a church person, okay, and I am, I, I grew up in church, we know some of the basic answers to that. We get forgiveness for our sins, yes. Yes, by coming to Jesus and apprenticing with him. We get our ticket to heaven stamped. Yes. That would be enough right there, but there's so much more. There's, there's right here, right now, walking with Jesus, things available to us if we will only receive them from him, if we'll, if we'll lean into that apprenticeship with him. Things like peace, Peace. Anybody need peace? I mean, it's the, the world is, it's not peaceful. And, and it wasn't peaceful here. And Jesus told his followers, I'm giving my peace to you. It's a peace that you cannot get from the world. You got to get it from me, and I'm offering it. Hmm. What about joy? Jesus said, I'm showing you this, I'm calling you to follow me and I'm teaching you these things so that your joy can be full. That sounds great. Fullness of joy. Um, As you look around, is the world just kind of enjoying themselves and what's going on? That's not what I see. But it's what we long for. It's what Jesus offers Uh, How about hope? We have hope. 
it, no matter what's going on, no matter how hard things get, and some of you are going through some hard stuff right now, and the world in general is going through some stuff right now, but no matter what, we have hope. We have a sovereign Lord who knows how it's going to turn out and knows what he's doing in and through all of that. And we know the end of the story. You know, spoiler alert. It's pretty good. Check it out. Hope. And a world that doesn't have it and is longing for it. Jesus offers that. What about a, a, a life of impact? And purpose. People want to, to, to f- so badly to feel like what they're doing matters. When we are apprenticed to Jesus, what we are doing matters the most. All the time. What about just the communion with God? Just knowing Jesus, just hanging out with the Lord of the universe. That's available Day by day. I I, I was thinking uh, this week about how Jesus is right there in in your life and in mine. He's right there. He is so ready to encourage and guide and embrace and direct and help and all of these things. He's just right there ready to do that as as an intimate friend and shepherd. And our backs are to him. We're just caught up in all this stuff. And it's making us anxious and angry and confused. And and he's right here, right here. And we have the opportunity to just turn around and receive it from him. Like, I don't want to miss out on that in my day-to-day. I don't want you to miss out on that. Because that is what is available to us if we will lean into this apprenticeship. If we will take the steps to get rid of what's in the way of apprenticing to him. That is what's available to us. Um, I just want to end by asking, how could we not do this? How could we not apprentice wholeheartedly to Jesus? Is anyone grateful that when you woke up this morning, your sins did not count against you. They are gone. They are taken care of. Jesus said, it's finished. Anybody happy about that? Like that's how we woke up today? Anybody happy that no matter what goes on in this short, tough life, you know what the next life is going to be? It's going to be perfect. No more tears. No more pain. The presence of Jesus and all of our brothers and sisters forever. Not bad, right? Anybody looking forward to that? Like if it's today, okay, Today would be fine. If Jesus did that for us, our sins are gone. We belong in heaven. We're citizens of his kingdom. How could we not, day by day by day, walk with him, apprentice under him? How could we not do it? Let me pray for this for us. We want to take you up on your invitation, Lord. We want to follow you, walk with you. And there is a cost, Lord, but it's so worth it. How could we not endure whatever cost it takes to be close to you, to walk with you, to experience these things with you, be part of who you are and what you're doing? Lord, I pray that each person here would be able to take that next step into closer apprenticeship with you. Whatever it is, whatever you're saying to them right now, to each of us right now, I pray that we'll be responsive and not walk out of here unchanged or no closer to you. Or, Lord, help us walk out of here walking toward you in whatever way you're asking us to do that. Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen.